Last week, Great Britain held parliamentary elections. It turns out this lady, this lady, she doesn't run the place. She's just watching their dogs. She's corgi sitting for Britain. That's all she's doing. Well, I'm sure her pay is commensurate with her tasks. Anyway, on Thursday, British voters chose their next prime minister, conservative. And current Prime Minister David Cameron, an Oxford-educated 48-year-old, thumped Labour's Ed Miliband, an Oxford-educated 45-year-old, because he can't make up those three years. That... <laughs> this being a national election, the UK media was pulling out all the stops. They had their creepy Madame Tussaud vote tally holograms. They had an unrealistically polite virtual parliament that doubled as the worst Sims expansion pack ever. <laughs> And they had an opinion room where each pundit appeared to have missed their flight, while one guy <laughs> bides his time with Sudoku. Um, he's just bored out of his mind. I just realized the holograms, the virtual sets, the British media has contracted a devastating case of CNN-itis. <laughs> so when a news organization spends a great deal of time creating visuals and set pieces which serve no discernible purpose and shed no perceptible light and actually distract you from what it was they were trying to find out. If you know something, no one can actually challenge the master. Good morning from the top of a big red bus that is now making its way across Westminster Bridge, Alison. So, Richard, what does this mean now for that referendum for, the, uh, for Britain leaving the EU? Alison, I can do better than that. Have a look at that as the million dollar shot. Look at that right up the River Thames, the London Eye. Camerata asked you a real question. You pointed to a f***ing Ferris wheel. That's what a six-year-old does. I see a wheel. Oh, it's nice to spin around. While Britain's media couldn't match us in pure wide-eyed nonsense, they did compare with us in one arena. The polls were completely wrong. All the advanced polls were very wrong. The real shock came at 10 p.m. London time when the exit poll was announced. Isn't that why we have elections? <laughs> to test the strength and competence of our polls. <laughs> the real winner tonight was our polling safeguard system, the election. <laughs> so despite all predictions, Cameron's conservatives swept to an outright majority. Their message must have really clicked with voters. The conservatives can actually govern the way they want to. Get rid of the deficit. Austerity measures really hitting um, those lower on the economic scale. Very large cuts to the welfare state. Repeal Tony Blair's ban on hunting with dogs. <laughs> what a popular message. A, a heady mix of grinding austerity and the killing of small furry animals. <laughs> I almost hate to say this, but... Leave Fox alone. <laughs> Fox never hurt anybody. <laughs> anyway, those policies sound like stuff British people would hate. How does Labour not walk away with this election? Ed Miliband had pretty dismal ratings when it came to leadership. The voters didn't really see him as prime ministerial. 40% thought you were weird. They see you as a North London geek. What did he say? What did he say? People, I think, who thought... That lady at the back is a man. All right, sorry about that. And you've got a beard, so you're clearly a man. Yeah. <laughs> Labour leader appears to be the love child of Joe Biden and David Brent. So what? <laughs> Still, the election was Miliband's to lose. I mean, unless there was some unfortunate image crystallizing incident. An inept Labour campaign symbolized by Miliband breaking one of the basic rules of politics. Don't eat a bacon sandwich in front of the cameras. The Tory supporting press jumped on the image. Miliband was not just a free-spending laborite, he just didn't look like a prime minister. That's it? <laughs> he ate a bacon sandwich? In our country, you're not even considered a viable presidential candidate <laughs> until you've been photographed deep-throating as much of a pig <laughs> as will not completely block your larynx. <laughs> If the British press went all in on Ed's lunch, I can't even imagine what their version of The Daily Show must have done. Hey! 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 Look at 
this guy. Look at this f***ing <laughs> Ed Miliband. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing shoving a bacon buddy in your gob with your hands like some kind of utensil-less gutter snipe? You ever heard of silverware? You never read your Deborah's Guide to Etiquette with modern f***ing manners? What, 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 what's, what's this, my friend? This is bullocks. Listen up, you below-stairs toss pot. If you're feeling peckish, you pop that sandwich on a f***ing plate, you get a knife and fork, you tuppity halfpenny piece of sh <laughs> oh, that was weird. Oh. Their, their Daily Show host is almost the opposite of our, where I would normally be upset with someone eating with a knife and fork, and yet their Daily Show host, and yet we both talk with the same accent. <laughs> The election has left the UK more starkly divided than ever. The left-leaning Scottish nationalists swept the north, conservatives dominate the south, and they agree on almost nothing. Well, almost nothing. The Scottish National Party is the very same party that was pushing for a breakup of the United Kingdom and for Scottish independence. David Cameron's promised that there would be a referendum where, where Britain would get the opportunity to vote to leave the European Union. So you could have Britain leaving the European Union, Scotland leaving the United Kingdom. Slytherin leaving Hogwarts! <laughs> Downstairs leaving upstairs! Dutton leaving Abbey! <laughs> Doctor leaving who? Everyone in Britain is pro-secession. They just can't agree on what to secede from. <laughs> Let's just do it. Let's just, you know what? Let's just, just, England ditches Europe. Scotland divorces England. Wales and Ireland split off and fragment. Northumbria and East Anglia secede. The ancient kingdoms of Merch and Wessex reassert their rights. Oxford and Cambridge go to war. Londinium seizes the banks. That weird Stonehenge thing comes to life and the Druids start their own thing. Tattooed tribal warlords clash and petty squabbles until the once and future king. <laughs> Arthur pulls Excalibur from the stone. <laughs> and once again unites all Britons against the Saxon horde. But by then, it's time for the next World Cup, and no one gives a about politics anymore. <laughs>